Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial about multi-parent constraint in Unity. So you can see my robot army on the screen and they are all using this multi-parent constraint. And if we actually focus more on one, you can see it's uh, picking up a um, screwdriver and working with it, putting it back and then do some stuff and pausing, pausing and then pick it up again. And that's what we're going to focus on. So I'm just going to walk through really quickly how I set this up and then I'm going to show the multi-parent constraint. That's pretty simple, actually. It's the workaround that's more tedious, I would say. So let's start from an empty, well, uh, another scene that I prepared. And I have this one here. <clears throat> So before we dive into the multi-parent constraint, I'm just going to explain the setup in the scene. So I have this uh, mesh asset that I made before. So there's a tutorial how to do this one. And if you look here in the hierarchy, you can see I have a bones and they have, um, yeah, bit skinned and everything like that. And then I added this one. So I added this, um, let's see here, chain constraint. So what that, that is, that you have this rig builder, and here I have the chain constraint that I have here. And the child here is the chain IK constraint. And here you set it up like you have bone zero, or where you want to start, and the tip. And then I have this um, here. And this is the, where do we have that one? Let's see. So and here I have a target moving it around like this. And as you can see, when I rotate it, it's not really rotating that super nice because you want it to propagate through the whole one. So that's what I solved in the next one. So here it's the same setup, but here I actually have added twist correction. So when this one's move, you see it's much more, much more nicer when it rotates, right? So here you do a hierarchy. I actually put the twist constraint first and then the chain IK as the second one, because I want this one to uh, activate first. And I had a little trouble uh, having this one working, so I made a helper script for it. And I have a tutorial for this one as well. And here you can see I also have this twist setup. So this one, the twist target is actually controlled by this script here. And uh, as I said, if you want to dive more into that, I have that tutorial too. And we are gonna, let's see if we just so then we have the final one here, right? So this one has first the chain constraint and the twist constraint, and then we added this multi-parent constraint on top of it. And it's essentially this one, right? So we're going to do it and it's not that complicated, but it's nice to just walk through how you do it. And so you here I have a tool position, this one here. So this one is like when I'm not using the screwdriver. And then I have another position here. And this is when I hold the screw, which means if, um, if I on this multi-parent start to put the weights different position here, then you can control where you want it. So this is how we're going to do it. And so this is the tool not use tool holding. So you have tool not use here and you have tool holding and that's on the bones arm. And then you have the tool red itself and you have it over here. And we're going to do it uh, from sort of scratch. So I have this one here. So what we have here is we haven't made the rig multi-parent multi constraint yet. So the first thing you need to do when you have 
everything set up. So if we just play once, you can see this is what happens here. <clears throat> so the screw is not following, but we have all the animations set up and we just want this one to follow. What we need, need to do now, so here you have the twist and chain already set up. And you need a new one. That's going to be the last thing here. And on the game object that holds the animator, you need to have the, this red, well, the tool itself. You can't have it outside. So if I move this one now, you see it doesn't follow, but now it follows. Uh, let's see here. And this is how the component is set up. You need to have it as a child on the animator like this, uh, where you have the animator. So if you want to do flexible setup, I guess you need to have a script that uh, parent it and populate it everywhere where it needs to be, or just hide it. So here we do a game object, an empty one. And it's, it's going to be a rig. And it's going to be, um, what's the name? Multi parent constraint. So here we are. Multi parent constraint, const ray. Like that. <clears throat> so the first thing you need to do is to have this rig. And this rig needs to be controlled by this rig builder. So we take the rig. Put it here and now that setup is connected so here we need to define what kind of rig component it is and we're going to have multi parent constraint so we have i have prepared the animation and all the positions so if you look at the tool not use if you do the mesh render i have it here so this is like when it's not used it's going to be here and also I have this, um, let's see, tool holding, I have it here. So if you don't really understand this uh, right target here is actually the controller for the, um, this is what I animated. And it's actually controlling the chain IK. Concerned. And if you don't really understand what's going on, you can check my tutorial that's focused only on chain IK constraint. You can find it in my tutorials. So, um, so this right target has the tool holding position and we have this not use position. Now we just need to have this tool red to lerp between these two positions. And in here, we need to populate them. So we're going to have tool not use. So this is going to be one place where we're going to store it and also tool holding like here. <clears throat> and the constrained object is the tool that we're going to move along. So now by default, you see it has a value of one and one, which means that this tool will be on this position and this position. And because it's one and one, it's going to be floating in the middle here. So if we just play here, now you see that the tool, the red tool is actually having the weight one, one, and it's always in the middle of this green two. And if we know, now do like tool not use, you can see now it will always be where the tool not use transform is. And if we, of course, do the opposite, now it will always be down here. So yeah. And uh, you can see this is the default place. So you could, I guess you could use that too. So if you do like this, and then you can have it like, yeah. So the only thing we need to do now is to animate this. And <clears throat> so you have this you have your kind of setup, right? Where you have your animator and you need to have all this stuff as a child to make it work on it. So what you do now in this um, here, when you have the animation set up, so 
here the only thing that's animated on everything here is this right target so here you see all the things i made so th that's the only thing that animated on this one and now when we are here we're gonna make sure and if it's press record too on the rig multi-parent constraint we want um we want the not use to be if one. Well, actually, if we think like this, so now it's both. So we can start by doing uh, zero. We can do not use one and we do tool holding zero. So when we come here, this is where we want to change it. So here we want the holding to be one. And we want uh, the tool not used to be zero. So of course now you see it's it's lurping like this. But what we want to do is just the frame before. Here you do. You want the not used position still be really strong, and holding, not yet starting. So it's gonna do the lurp in the in this part here. So now you see it's gonna be like this. Then it's going to be following here. And then when you come back here, you just see so what you want to do. You want to have the holding maximum. So I just drag it to update the frames here, and then zero. And then on the next frame, you want it to be not use weight one and to hold zero and that's it so now we will play well actually we, we i'm gonna play like this so then i know and i'm gonna hide these ones i don't want these ones to be shown either it just help mesh to navigate so here you have it Isn't it lovely? And actually, I notice it's kind of here, it's intersect. So we could um, just do this target like this. Yeah. So that's going to be, yeah. And I'm going to do this one like this. It's going to be a little bit quick fix, but you know. It looks good. Perfect. So thank you so much for watching and I really hope you liked it. And um, subscribe if you want to see more of this. And thank you so much.